let's dive in here. All right, Alex. QBs. Give me some quarterbacks or, that you like this week. QBs or not QBs? That is the question. So, like, you know, this time of year, it's like, you know, you sort by projections, whatever website you're using, uh, ESPN's far superior to Yahoo and, and both of our opinions. And you're kind of like, all right, so so who who do we go with? Who do we start? Um, so, like, we're looking at the best matchups of the week. Josh Allen uh, is projected for the most points on ESPN. Um, but he's facing Denver, which has a pretty OK defense. Uh, Vic Fangio has has been, you know, somebody that really has designed how to beat Patrick Mahomes just as an example. So like uh, a couple of years ago when he was the Bears defensive coordinator, he he broke the Rams offense and really set up the template for how the Patriots shut down the Rams in the Super Bowl that year. You look at what he did to Patrick Mahomes a couple of weeks ago and kind of the blueprint of Miami picked him off a couple times um, this last week. So, I, hey, I get why you're going to start Josh Allen. But keep in mind, it's in Denver. There could be weather. I mean, you, you don't know what when snow is going to pop up in Denver. It's a, it's a weird Saturday three in the afternoon central time game. So um, I'm not saying he's not going to finish quarterback one, um, but that's somebody that would be like, oh, I don't know if I really want to play him against Denver. So like from my perspective, Lamar Jackson's going to be the potential. I, I think he's the number one quarterback the rest of the way. We've talked about how easy their schedule is. Um, he's facing the the Jacksonville Jaguars this week that have given up the third most points to the quarterback position this year so far. Um, everybody saw what he did the other night against Cleveland, which I think is actually a, a relatively good defense. Um, I mean, you oh god, nine carries, 124 yards, two touchdowns, and and he was out for a while in that game. Um, he finally dropped his 30 point week. Um, which was the first time this year after having like six of them last year. Um, so, I mean, pop is back um, when, when it comes to Lamar. I, I, I don't I don't think I'm starting anybody at the quarterback position over Lamar. Um, and this is really the time that you've been waiting for if you're still alive to to plug and play him. I, I know me and my cousin went back and forth on who should the start of Justin Herbert and Lamar Jackson. Um and I'm, it was pretty uniform ac- across across the board that Herbert would have been the play last week against Atlanta. Um, but Atlanta's defense has been, you know, relatively OK since Raheem Morris took over um, after being abysmal to start the season, giving up all those passing touchdowns specifically. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Lamar Jackson for me is absolutely the number one. It shouldn't really come as a surprise. Um so that's that's the first guy that I would highlight from the quarterback position, which is a pretty, pretty no brainer. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you drafted Lamar, you're starting him uh, unquestionably. Um, I want to I'm going to try to steer a little bit more towards fringe guys. Like maybe yeah. maybe if you're sitting there and you're starting like a Ryan Tannehill who had 15, 16 points last week and you don't know if you want to trot him out uh, against Detroit this week. Um or, you know, you have somebody else or you've been regularly streaming at the position and and you're looking for a streaming quality type S quarterback. There's a couple of yep. guys I want to talk about. Um, the first one is somebody I think that is going to present the best um, potential to be available uh, in a positive matchup. And that's Jared Goff, who plays yep. the Jets at home. Uh, Goff is only rostered in 52% of fantasy football leagues, uh, at least on ESPN. Um, His last few games have been a roller coaster, quite honestly. Week 11 against Tampa, 23 fantasy points, throws 300, almost 400 yards, has several touchdowns. Uh, San Francisco the next week, three fantasy points. Um, Then at Arizona, 24 fantasy points. Again, 350 yards and a score, also at a rushing score. Last week against New England, like you mentioned, wasn't pretty. 15 points. So it's been up and down week over week, which means, hey, he's due for that bounce back this week. And there is no, well, there's no better team to to bounce back against in the NFL than there is in the New York Jets. Uh, They're the best best rebound, man. You you talk about, yeah, just light it up. Uh, The Jets are currently giving up the most fantasy points to the quarterback position in the league over the last month 
Um, they've been giving up 25 and a half fantasy points per game to quarterbacks. Incredible numbers. Uh, they're giving up almost eight yards per pass attempt, which is uh, tied for second highest in the NFL right now. Um, you mentioned uh, being a little bit nervous about playing Josh Allen in Denver. Denver is actually giving up. They're tied for the fifth fewest yards per pass attempt at 6.3. So, I mean, I understand it. Um, I'd be a little nervous for Josh Allen as well. I think really the only way that he's able to turn out in RB1 type production is if he has a good day on the ground. So I'm not sure that that's necessarily out of the question, but I don't think he's going to be passing for four or five touchdowns like he has been. So. Right. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. It should be noted that the Jets, um, you know, they've given up under 30 points once in their last uh, five games. Um, so that's not good. Um, <laughs> vice versa. It's not great. Den- no, right. Exactly. And then all of a sudden you, you go to Denver. Um, you know, they've given up 30 twice over the last five games. One of those, I believe, was against the Saints when they just didn't have an offense. So, it, I, you know, I don't know if you really even count it. Um, Yeah, so, I mean, just to go back to fringe guys a little bit. So, I, I know on the waiver pod, we talked about Mitchie. We talked about Gardner Minshew. Um, you know, if you're in a tough spot, you can you can start either of those. Um, we, we also talked about Jalen Hurts, who's still only rostered um in 21 percent of leagues which seems low um but i i think i think i'm gonna go with Derek carr um for for kind of my fringe play of the week um he's only rostered in 53.6 percent of leagues um and he's he's facing the chargers uh tonight when you're listening to this which is thursday and so thursday games are always a little bit weird um but one of the reasons why why I like that is is one, it's the highest over under for the week in Vegas, which is 53 points, which I mean, Vegas always wins. Um, it's the highest game by a point and a half um, at, at 53 points. Las Vegas um, is giving up tons of tons of points and the Chargers are giving up tons of points. Um, I know they did not last week. They only gave up 17. But before that, they gave up 45 uh, and that 45 zero to um to the patriots and yeah there were some special teams touchdowns in there but 27 28 29 the weeks before that um i mean the the raiders are going to put up 30 points in that game i think the chargers are going to put up 30 points in that game um so I, I think you want all the stock that you can possibly get um to kick off your your week 15 matchup um and so f- for me that's Derek carr where yeah he's kind of up and down too um, and Henry Ruggs, it doesn't sound like is going to play, um, this week, um, because I think he got thrown on the COVID list. Um, so yeah, he's, he's my, Derek Carr is my guy. He's been over 300 yards each of the last two weeks. Um, once against those lowly jets that we just talked about and, and Indy last week. Um, I, I don't see how this is not a high scoring game. So, um, I would, I would roll out Derek Carr with some confidence um, I don't know if I'd start him over Josh Allen, honestly, um, but I think it's pretty close. All right. Um, so the, we've those are a couple guys that are, I mean, virtually all of them are uh, still rostered in more than 50% of leagues. Uh, Carr and Goff both are. So you mentioned Jalen Hurts. He is currently rostered only at 21%. Yep. If there was a guy that was available in more competitive leagues. Um, It's more likely to be Jalen Hurts than anybody else that we've talked about so far. Um, Mm -hmm. Going up against Arizona this week, who, yes, um, they only allowed the lowly New York Giants to score uh, seven points on them last week. Um, However, you know, the week before that, they gave up 38 points the week before that 20 then 28 and 30 all the way back to week 10 so they are giving up points um they just had a day against uh the giants last week um jalen hurts comes in after lighting up the new orleans saints if you want to call it that not really through the air only completed 17 of 30 attempts 57 percent of his passes approximately 
for about 170 yards and a score. The major contribution came on the ground, 18 rushing right. attempts for 106 yards. I mean, does he have 10 points built in? It's at Arizona. It's in a dome. There's no weather concerns. He's going to be running for his life um, in that offensive line, behind that offensive line. Um, the Cardinals they're pretty stout in terms of fantasy points given up to the quarterback over the last month. They've actually given up the sixth fewest and they're only allowing quarterbacks to average 12 and a half fantasy points per game. Um, I mean, so were the saints and you saw what the Eagles did to them though, too. You know, that's my argument while yeah. they're doing very well against quarterbacks. They're giving up their 25th against running backs and they're giving up 25, 20 or just 24, excuse me, 24 and a half fantasy points per 20, game, oh. 24 and a half fantasy points per game to running backs. Jalen hurts to me, at least right now is, you know, going to be a lot more effective on the ground than he will be through the air. Um, that it didn't matter against the saints. Do you think that he's able to have a successful day? Would you rank, where would you rank him? Where do you ballpark top 10, top 12, top 15? Uh, he's definitely top 15 just because of the built-in rushing yards um, uh, and relatively okay matchup where, you know, their offense showed life for the first time. I don't think the Eagles are terrible. It's just that Wentz just really sucked. Um, he he Could does not have make weapons. a decision this year. No, like he dropped back to pass and he was like, a, he was just like ducking right away. Um, so yeah, I, I, he's definitely a top 15 play. I, I think he's a safe safe play i i would be surprised if he like explodes for a, a top like six week top five week um but i, I think he's got a, a pretty high floor because of those rushing yards um i would say part of it also depends on the scoring of your league and we've talked about this since we've started recording podcasts um if you're in a standard you know espn league where it's four points per passing touchdown and six point per rushing touchdown Every score that Jalen Hurts has on the ground, you're getting two bonus points that other quarterbacks yeah. don't have. Um, not to mention how you get a lot more fantasy points for rushing yards than you do passing. So he's going to have that floor. It's going to be built in. There are awful on the ground. Excuse me. The Cardinals are awful against stopping the ground game. Um I uh I'm a little bit excited to see what Jalen Hurts can do in not as tough of a defensive matchup against right. the Cardinals um, and it not being freezing. And yeah, it, I, me too. I agree. Yeah. I mean, they're giving up four and a half yards per rush right now, which is 20th in the league. So would you, I want to get into a little bit of, would you rather, would you rather, would you rather start Jared Goff or Jalen hurts? I would rather start Goff. Um, I feel like he's he has the the higher ceiling against the Jets because everybody just tortures the Jets. I, I think you'd have a hard time starting Hurts over him. Would you rather start? Let's see. even with even with Cam Akers kind of emergence here, where you know that might eat into his passing attack. Uh, you know, from a throwing touchdown perspective. That would be my only only concern of of starting golf over Hertz. Yeah, um, I guess for the record, I am on the Hertz side of that golf question. Um, would you rather start Hertz or who else is around that same grouping? Mitch Trubisky at Minnesota. Uh, I would start Hertz um, again. I don't think Trubisky's terrible start this week um you're desperate if you're playing them but you could do worse um well we already talked about him uh hurt or Derek carr um i i would start Derek carr i i think the matchup's too good i really want to go hurts there uh hurts or Taysom hill uh, it depends. Drew Brees got activated um to participate in practice today or designated to re return from ir so um, we don't actually know what that's going to look like. They play Kansas City. Um, regardless, I think I would rather start Hurts um, because Kansas City's defense isn't terrible against the pass. Um, so, yeah, I, I would start Hurts. Um, just, just as we're kind of like delving in a little bit to some guys that, I, you know, we maybe might not start. Um, I, I would not want to start Baker Mayfield. Um, 
he's got the he's got the Giants this week, and I know Baker's come on quite a bit the last um, I don't know two three weeks, um, but I I would stay away from him. The Jets are giving up the fifth least amount of points to the quarterback position. You mean the Giants? Uh, or sorry, yeah, sorry, Giants are giving up the fifth least amount of points to the quarterback position. Uh, we talked about the Giants defense quite a bit this year where, um, you know, it's just not a good matchup. You don't like we talked down the Cardinals last week um, and they did just OK. A lot of that was set up with turnovers and the the Giants inability to move the ball on, on offense. Um, I, I wouldn't want to start Teddy Bridgewater. Um I would never want to start Cam Newton against Miami. Uh, if you're still starting Cam Newton, like just please find somebody else. Um, and even like a, a Deshaun Watson who has gotten you this far. Um, and I, I know he did okay against the Colts, but if if Brandon Cooks doesn't play again, and just him having no weapons against a good de- against a good defense in Indy, who's at home. I would pause in playing him this week um, just because you just don't like you saw what the Bears did to him last week. He got hurt. He didn't finish that game Um, there. I don't think there's been an injury update on him. I'm assuming he's a full participant because there's nothing sitting next to his name. Um, I guess he came back in, but he he should not have. Um, I, I don't know. I. I would I would have pause starting Deshaun Watson this week. Yeah, he's one of those people that I'm a little bit nervous about. Now, of late, Indy has been a lot more leaky to quarterbacks. Yep. Um, and we talked about that in our last couple podcasts. But my concern is just the absolute lack of weapons. I mean, yeah. you, you get to a point, it doesn't matter how a defense or how an opponent is doing. These guys are all professionals. You know, you need to have at least a basic level of competitive ability um, in order to compete. And so I do worry about Deshaun. Uh, if 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 I was a Deshaun manager that made it to the playoffs, I would I and would be, survived his performance last week. You're like breathing somehow. a sigh of relief that you're that you're still alive. Yeah, I mean, Deshaun, I think could find a way to finish still as a QB one. It's just, I'm just worried about it. I'm not as confident in it. Um, One person that I think that you should stay away from if you have been able to make it this far with him after last week's 13 and a half point output against Buffalo uh, from Ben Roethlisberger. Um, that offense hasn't looked pretty for a while now. He's kind of a check down machine. Um, they only completed, he only completed about 57% of his passes against Buffalo last week. Has a good defense. No hate against Buffalo, but it's not an upper, it's not a top three defense in the league, at least not in my mind. Um, Fifty-seven percent only pass for one hundred and eighty-seven yards. Yes, had a couple scores, but he's had a he's thrown a pick in each of the last four games now. Two picks against Buffalo at Cincinnati, which like you think about, oh my God, they're going to be able to do whatever they want to Cincinnati. Cincinnati is giving up the seventh fewest points to quarterbacks right now um, over the last month, and. They're only giving up on average 13 fantasy points per game to QBs. Um, and you know why? It's because they're 26th against the run. The, uh, running backs are averaging 25 fantasy points per game against Cincinnati right now. I think you're going to see James Conner and Benny Snell come back to life a little bit. Um, Deontay Johnson. Uh, really? You really think their running backs are going to do something? I think they're, they're going to do something. Attack. No, nah, I, I, I would start Big Ben with confidence this week. Oh, personally, I mean, he's, he's got he's got two touchdowns or, or more in every game except for two this whole year. I know, I know they've struggled a little bit, but uh, I mean Cincinnati is they're they're toast. They they got nothing left. Andy Dalton destroyed them um, last week. There, there's if the weather's okay, um, I think the I think the the Steelers have a bounce back week here where they, they finally get set, you know, seven days in between games. Um, 
which they have not had in a while with their funky schedule playing on Tuesday and then early Monday. Like they've they've had a, they've had a weird couple of games, and and I'm not making excuses for them, but um, I I would start Roethlisberger with confidence. I would never start a Pittsburgh running back, regardless. At this point, if you've gotten this far, <laughs> don't just don't do it. Start somebody else. <laughs> I love that you said Andy took him to the woodshed. He only had 185 passing yards and 15 yeah, it, fantasy points. But it was like, a revenge. It was a revenge game. But you know what you could <laughs> see though? Easily you could see Pittsburgh getting up a couple scores, three say they get up three scores, and two of those happen to be rushing punch ins. And Big Ben sitting there with 15 Both by points. Benny Snell, that asshole. Yeah. And they're gonna run the rest of the clock out. They're just gonna run clock the second half. Like that's what yeah, makes could. me worried about that game. Yeah. Um, for Ben, but yeah, that's fair. We'll see. Also, I I had a title for this podcast, but Deontay Johnson dropped it. Um, oh man! <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, I would say you actually, yeah, you took my joke because oh, uh, you can't, no, we can't, I was, we're talking about the Steelers for ten minutes, and you don't make a Deontay Johnson drop joke. That's on you, bro. No, I was gonna do it on, about Marquise Brown, who got added to the COVID list, and we don't know if it was a close contact or if he actually has it or not. And I was gonna say, well, we know he didn't catch it <laughs> because. <laughs> Especially if Lamar threw it to him, it was underthrown and it just didn't get to him. Oh my God. Lord. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. I applaud it. It was still good. It was still good. Yeah. Um, right. Random, r- random, random point just for a quick look ahead to week uh, 16. If you're looking at a title game matchup um, and, and I would look at potentially adding Drew Locke, um, who's only rostered in 8.6% of leagues. Um yeah, oh. I'm going there. He he's at Whoa. the Chargers. He's at the Chargers week 16. Um and oh. so I'm just saying he had four touchdowns against Carolina. He's he's in LA. Good weather week 16 against a really terrible defense. Don't be surprised if Drew Locke does something in week 16. So if you're really desperate for a quarterback, um I would point you that direction as a pickup now so you don't have to spend anything next week. So the way that our podcast works, um, we've obviously seen week over week decreased uh, viewer and listenership as people are slowly but surely eliminated (laughs) from. Is that why? Because I'm recommending Drew Locke. And so I just want to say that for the seven people that are left listening to our podcast, (laughs) (laughs) please do not start Drew Locke in your fantasy football championship. Should you make it there next week? <laughs> uh, I'll go on record now. I'll throw it on the board. He'll have over 20 fantasy points in week 16. Over 20? Yeah. All right. Hold on. How many times has he even gone over 20 on the season? Let's start there first. Uh, Drew Locke has gone over 20 fantasy points. I mean, he did it last week, as you mentioned. Other than that, he has done it exactly one time, and that was against yep. Atlanta yep. when he threw for 313 and two touchdowns. At mm-hmm. the Chargers, over 20. Can I get 23? Nope, 20. Uh, that's fair. If he does that, he'll be a top 10 play. Yeah, that's fine. Put Correct. it on the board. Okay. Put yeah, it on I'll the board. It on there. I think I honestly, I think it's 50 50 does it. So I'm not super confident in that one, but it's so outside of it's so like non chalk as far as like what, you know, most mainstream analysts are going to say. I wouldn't be surprised if he pops off for 20, though, in that matchup. It's pretty juicy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like you should add him um, if you're in a rough spot, because I, I think he's overly playable in that matchup. You don't have to worry about weather. Um, which is going to make a difference that weekend. I can just, you know, you can just tell it's going to matter. Um, and I would, I would start him with confidence. All right. That does it for me for quarterbacks. You got anybody else? Are we ready for running backs, buddy? Let's move it. Let's move on. 